Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. In the previous lecture, we saw the minimum mean square error equalizer and the potential advantages that it has over the zero forcing equalizer. While still being suboptimal, it takes into account the effect of noise while performing the equalization. In this lecture, we are going to implement the minimum mean square equalizer on GNU radio and compare the performance with the zero forcing equalizer and find out how it works when you have lower and higher SNR regions. Let us first perform a simple MMSE equalization example without really a special channel wherein we just have a scaling based channel. So let's begin. So I'll have a random source and this random source goes from 0 to 4 with a byte. We'll grab a constellation encoder, say constellation, along with a constellation encoder we will also grab a constellation object and we will then grab, we will then grab a throttle because we are performing a simulation, connect these up, we will use the default QPSK constellation, we will call it my const and we will also have this point to the my const object. Now, we will have a simple gain factor. So I'm just going to introduce a range controller for command F. I'll say range and I'm going to have this being the amplitude A going from let's say 0 0.01, 0 0.01 through 10. Okay, so because it will be high SNR, let's keep the default as uh, default value to be 1. Now I'm going to just say control F for command I will say multiply and we will just add a multiply um, we we'll, for multiply we'll add a source constant source and this constant source is going to be having value A and that settles it. Next we add noise unit energy noise control F for command F we we'll get a noise source. We'll do add. What if a command F? We'll say add. And now we are going to do a simple analysis of two equalizers. Of course, it's very simple. The zero forcing equalizer just says undo the channel. In this, in this case, our channel is just the value A. So we will do one upon A. For the MMSC, however, we will have to be careful. We will have to do what, not 1 upon A, but we have to essentially scale based on the SNR. How do we do that? In this case, you can verify using the discussion in class that the scaling factor will be A upon A square plus 1. If you don't believe me, you can just substitute in the formulas and get it. But it will be A upon A square plus 1. Let's now see how this works out. So first, I'm going to add a constellation sync. And in this constellation sync, we will take two objects, two inputs. The first one goes through just 1 upon A. The second one goes through A upon 1 plus A square. So let's add two multipliers. We'll just copy this, Control C, Control V. And we'll add a constant source, Control C, Control V over here. And this particular constant source is 1 upon A. The second one, we will do another multiplier, control C, control V, control C, control V over here. And this particular constant source doesn't do 1 upon A, it does A upon 
a square plus 1. If you see that when a becomes very large, that is in the high SNR regime, this is 1 upon a. Because you know, when a becomes very large, you can ignore the 1. Alternately, you can also write this as 1 upon plus 1 by a also. That will also give you the same result. But for convenience, I am going to write this as a upon a square plus 1. Let us now execute this flow graph. Of course, uh, the value of A and the corresponding noise are resulting in this. If I start increasing this A, you can see that the constellations start becoming more discernible. Okay. In fact, let's make A go to a higher value. Let's say let's allow A to go to about 100 and step also let's make it 0 0.1. I think that makes it better. Yeah. So now let's set A to somewhere here. You can see that this is very high SNR regime and in the very high SNR regime, you can see that the zero forcing and MMSE equalizers are very close, which satisfies our intuition. But as you make the SNR lower and lower by reducing the A, let's say you start making it this over here, you can slowly see that the blue points, the blue parts of the constellation that correspond to the zero forcing essentially start shaking a little more and going further out. Let's actually just do one thing. Let's increase the number of points the constellation shows. Let's also increase the number of points this random source shows, uh, essentially generates and let's also increase the sampling rate to get somewhat faster results. If I execute this flow graph and let's say I set the SNR to a smaller and smaller value, you can see clearly that the blue parts are outside the red parts which means they essentially end up spreading more and as my SNR becomes lower and lower, it is very evident that the blue parts are going further and further out. The, it's almost like the MMSC essentially takes into account the fact that there is noise and because of that moderates the 1 upon a division and an a is small it says don't divide by a divide by something like a plus 1 by a that results in a slightly better performance unlike the MMSE which just says even if a is 0 0.01 you just divide by 1 upon a in the limit when a is close to uh, when is a is close to 0 then the MMS equalizer says, okay, I'm giving you nothing. I'm just going to start outputting zero while the zero forcing essentially just says, I'm just going to divide by A still and give you some random results that may or may not make sense. As the SNR starts increasing, okay, sorry. As the SNR starts increasing, let's say to, let's say something like, if I make it point 0.1, still you can see that, you know, the red blob is still not that discernible. As you start make going to a higher and higher SNR, then things start to come back and as the SNR increases, you can see still that the MMSC doesn't really allow the red to go very far out while the zero forcing takes it out. This is an intuitive way to understand that the zero forcings approach of just saying I'm just going to cancel the channel even if it's a single tap channel irrespective of noise is not the best approach for, for low SNRs. While at very high SNRs, as SNR keeps increasing, you will see that the zero forcing and MMSE essentially become one and the same. As you can see, the blue one is slightly out, you know, it's slightly outside, but not by that much. As my SNR increases to, let's say now, let's say if it is close to 10, that corresponds to a high SNR, then you can see that there's almost no difference. There's somewhat of a difference, not much difference. This confirms the intuition that your zero forcing and MMSE equalizers are one and the same for high SNRs, but at really low SNRs, they have a much different approach to handling the problem. This was a simplistic picture. Let us now move on to looking at the running example that we have been discussing, wherein there was a channel that had the coefficients one half minus half and see how the zero forcing and MMSE equalizers compare in that scenario. We will be using the same running example consisting of symbol transmission at the rate of half a symbol per second and 
Because of the channel, the effective received symbols are essentially convolved with P of t that lasts between 1 and 4 samples and its values are 1, half and minus half. You may recollect that we wrote this in the form of this particular matrix equation which when made more compact becomes u is equal to half minus half 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, half minus half 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, half and rk can be written as ubk plus wk where the symbol that is being detected bk corresponds to the middle column of this u. This is something that I would like you to keep in mind. Let us quickly open a python prompt and try to put this together and compare the actual MMSE equalizer and the zero forcing equalizers that we get. To now perform a comparison of the MMSE and zero forcing equalizers, we will use a python prompt and write out the equalizers in python and compare them. Let us begin. We will first import numpy. Next, we will write our U matrix. Remember that the U matrix had the columns which corresponded to 1 half minus half and so on. But the first column was half minus half and three zeros. The second column had 0, 1 half minus half 0. The last column had three zeros followed by 1 and half. We will write them in the row form and take the transpose. So U is equal to np dot array. Remember the first column had half, minus half and three zeros. Let's write it. The second column had zero, one, half, minus half, zero. The final column had three zeros followed by one and half. The dot t ensures that we get a transpose. If you now look at your u, you can verify from the slides that this is indeed the u that you want. Let us revisit the zero forcing equalizer that you evaluated earlier. If you remember, the zero forcing equalizer CZF can be evaluated by using the formula u multiplied by and in Python recent versions of python at least you can use the at the rate operator for performing matrix multiplication and p dot inverse i can take transpose because hermitian and transpose are same for the real, real matrix and then i will multiply by the column vector 0 1 0 which I can compactly write in this way if I evaluate CZF you will see that I get 5 upon 8 5 upon 8 5 upon 8 minus 1 upon 8 and 2 upon 8 which was exactly the solution that you got earlier now let us evaluate the MMSC equalizer using a similar approach remember to evaluate the MMSC equalizer you need ES that corresponds to the signal to noise ratio as well let us now write out the formula for the MMSE equalizer. We will assume an ES. Let's say ES is equal to, I'll say, 10 corresponding to 10 dB. Our R is U multiplied by U transpose plus 1 upon ES times CW, 1 upon ES times, and since our noise is IID across samples, we will just take the noise covariance to be identity. And then we just need to perform R inverse times P. In this, in this case, it is R inverse times U0. Let us do that. To get U0 that corresponds to the UK, remember, we are interested in BK. This column multiplies BK minus 1. This column multiplies BK. This column multiplies BK plus 1. If you remember the way we formulated this U, Therefore, we have to multiply by the middle column of u and that can be extracted by writing colon comma 1. The colon corresponds to get all rows. The 1 corresponds to get the second column. Now, if we evaluate this, 
okay i'm sorry we have to just evaluate the inverse in this manner np dot linalg dot inverse okay we get something let us actually store this as c mmse and let us display it also okay now let us increase the snr to let's say 100 because that corresponds to 20 db you can see that the coefficients undergo some changes they start looking a lot like the zero forcing equalizer if you don't believe me let us actually just look at the zero forcing also just below you can see that they start becoming closer if i increase the snr to let's say a thousand you will start seeing that the coefficients start looking really really close if i now just take one more step let's say i make the snr 10000 like 40 db or so you will see that you are really really close to the zero forcing equalizer why does this happen the reason is because this particular expression r inverse times p the r inverse times p where p is u0 essentially boils down to the same as the u times u transpose u inverse times e0 that you saw in the case of zero forcing as this noise terms contribution becomes closer and closer to zero you can verify this by working it out but intuitively as well when there is no noise then the optimal strategy is to just cancel the interference altogether therefore you can use this numerical approach to verify that the zero forcing equalizer and mmse equalizer are the same at very high signal to noise ratios for one more step let us just add another zero so this is 10 db 20 db 30 db 40 50 db of snr and for 50 db you are really really close if you don't believe me if you want to just subtract and compare the coefficients the coefficients differ only in their fifth decimal point or sixth decimal points our next task will be to implement this in the flow graph to compare the zero forcing and mmse equalizers to perform the comparison of the performance of the zero forcing and MMSE, MMSE equalizers, we will build upon the flow graph that we used for the zero forcing equalizer. We have built this a couple of lectures ago. If you do not have this flow graph, I urge you to follow along in the zero forcing GNU radio related lecture and build the flow graph so that we can now take this forward and build the comparison between the zero forcing and MMSE equalizers. Our first endeavor here will be to add a variable that corresponds to the matrix U. So let's do control F or command F and say variable. But before that, let us actually just do import of NumPy because it will come in very handy. So I'm just going to do the import first. So we will grab our import block. We will write import numpy as np now that we have numpy let us first create the variable control f for command f we'll say variable and this variable let us call it u and its value will be np dot array and we will write the same thing that we wrote earlier This is the first column, the second column, the third column and transpose. We now have the matrix ready. Our next endeavor will be to add, actually construct the filter. To do that, we will now need the SNR. The noise STD essentially is our proxy for SNR. The noise STD gives the noise power and the signal power is 1 because we use a normalized constellation. Therefore, our ES is just going to be 1 upon noise STD square. Now, to actually perform a comparison of the zero forcing and MMSE equalizers, let us first 
remove the, uh, the extra constellation points over here and then we will first make this have only two inputs the first one being the zero forcing based constellation and we will just add the MMSE based constellation as well for the MMSE based constellation we will be creating another pair of interpolating FIR filters that will take in coefficients that correspond to the MMSE equalizer now we're just going to create a copy of this so control C control V now these coefficients are going to be determined at runtime we will double click this this is not going to be 2 by 8 5 by 8 5 by 8 we are first going to perform R inverse times P and then take the particular coefficients that we need so in this case we will do NP dot linalg dot inverse okay now we are going to do u at u transpose plus 1 upon noise std square sorry noise std square because es is 1 upon noise std square times np dot i5 let's make this wider so that you can see this okay we now have the inverse times u1 let's see whether what this does okay, there's a slight error yeah so yeah so we can't evaluate it because the the singular when noise std is zero no problem let's actually just set the D noise std to start at 0 0.01 so that we don't have the zero related issue so now there should be no problem this is done but we don't need all the coefficients for this particular filter we need the first third and fifth coefficients so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually index them by using first swapping them so, uh, sorry by first reversing them and then we will go from the last coefficient to the first coefficient in this manner or let's first reverse it let's first make it simple St colon colon minus one reverses the sequence then we need colon two every other sequence let's check so as a sanity check let's actually just yeah the noise SNR is very low as a sanity check you will see that the coefficients are close to 0.25 and the last coefficient is close to 0.625 similarly I'm just going to copy this Rather, I'm going to copy this interpolating filter, control C, paste it, and I'm going to change this one by double clicking on it. And I'm going to take only the instead of the first, third, and fourth, I'm going to take first, third, and fifth, second, and fourth. So I'm just going to put a one here. One colon colon two will ensure that I get the second and fourth coefficients. So that gives me minus one two five minus one two five m. That is minus point one two five and minus point six two five. This essentially makes my MMSE equalizer equalizer very very easy to build. Let me just make everything visible for you. Yeah. So now that we have our MMSE equalizer also, let's connect the corresponding filters. And again, I need an adder, control C and control V. We'll add these two up. And then we can compare the constellations. Yeah, let us make the noise std a variable. So we'll delete this and say control F for command F. We'll say variable. And we will just make this noise std and we'll make it 0 0.1. And then we'll see what happens. With 0 0.1, you can see that the constellations look somewhat similar. But the interesting thing will happen only when our SNR starts becoming worse. Let's make it 0 0.3 and let's also increase the number of samples to 10,000. Now you can see that both the constellations have some spread but if you look carefully the spread for the red constellation may be slightly lower. We can verify by increasing the number of constellation points over here 
and then viewing it you can see that the spread for the red constellation points is slightly lesser this is because the MMSE equalizer accounts for the impact of noise let's just increase the noise standard deviation to 0.4 we are entering into lower SNR territory now you can see that the blue points go much farther than the red ones indicating that the MMS equalizer performs somewhat better of course it's not much better somewhat better if you make the noise really really high say 0 0.8 now everything becomes bad but still because of the fact that you're taking into account the impact of noise you can see that the red points don't go much further let's actually just increase the sample rate a little bit so that you can see a little more yeah so you can barely make out a couple of uh, you know some four blobs over here indicating the four QPSK constellation points and they are somewhat concentrated but the blue one goes all over the place because the noise is amplified significantly of course at really low SNRs the performance of the MMSE equalizer is also poor primarily because it doesn't really cleanly remove the impact of uh, equalization that well but it's still marginally better than the zero forcing equalizer one remark is that the MMSE equalizer minimizes the mean squared error which is not same as maximizing the symbol error rate sorry maximum minimizing the symbol error rate minimizing the symbol error rate optimally is achieved only by maximum likelihood sequence estimation for which you need to perform something like the Viterbi algorithm but you can just assume that the zero forcing works at very high SNRs MMSE is okay at medium SNRs as well and both of them are the same at high SNRs both zero forcing MMSE but at very low SNRs they perform poorly and when the SNR becomes much much lower then you have to really settle for a lower data rate or a poorer performance in this lecture we have seen the minimum mean square error equalizer in the case of having a single tap channel as well as having a more complicated channel response as you have seen when the signal to noise ratio is very small then the use of the minimum mean square error equalizer has several advantages over the zero forcing primarily because it limits the noise enhancement significantly the minimum mean square equalizer minimum mean square error equalizer while being suboptimal still takes into account the noise variance and therefore can result in better performance at low SNRs while at very high SNRs it's roughly equal to the zero forcing equalizer as we have seen. The use of suboptimal equalizers is a key idea that simplifies receiver implementation and you can explore more on this in the various GNU radio blocks that are available. Thank you.